So white balance is the process of calibrating your camera to interpret the ambient light correctly, ensuring that your whites look white across shot to shot. In this video, I'm going to break white balance down in a way that's super easy to understand. You'll learn how to set it in camera, how to fix it in DaVinci Resolve, and I'll show you two ways, a beginner friendly and a more advanced way to adjust white balance in your editing software. If you're just starting out with color, make sure to save this video and come back to it as a reference. It'll take a little while before the penny drops on white balance, so it's good to have this video as a reference point to come back to and refresh your memory. So imagine you're outside on a bright sunny day. The light is clear, it's slightly cool, and when you look at something white, it appears white. Then you step into a little cafe with warm yellow toned light. Again, everything looks normal. Whites look white, colors look normal. That is because our eyes are always automatically adjusting the white balance for us. So our eyes adapt instantly to changes in lighting and changes in color temperature. Okay, so then if we take our camera and we bring our camera into those same lighting environments, we need to tell our camera what the temperature of that ambient light is. So we need to tell our camera that we are outside in more cool natural light versus, okay, now we're inside in a cafe with warm artificial light. So when we're out and about and we're moving around the world with our cameras, we're, we're constantly in different lighting scenarios. So we step outside into normal daylight. We're at about 5,200 Kelvin, right? Then let's say we walk into that cozy cafe where there's artificial yellow light. Now our ambient light's probably closer to 3000. But if you look at this chart, you've got tungsten, which is 3200. Then we go back outside, the clouds have come over. So we're looking at about 6000 Kelvin. Then maybe we duck under for some shade. We're at about 7000 Kelvin. So you can see how the color temperature of light changes as we move around different scenarios. If I'm with my camera, I need to tell the camera, okay, we're in daylight, 5,200 Kelvin. So I would set my camera's white balance to 5,200 Kelvin. Then when I go into that little cafe, I'm gonna tell my camera, hey, we're in a cafe now. We need to set the white balance to 3,000. So you're constantly matching the white balance on your camera to the ambient light of the environment that you're in. That is white balance in a nutshell. If you got a perfectly white object in your shot, let's say this is perfectly white, this t-shirt, the RGB values, red, green, and blue values are all going to be exactly the same. If there's a bit of a red shift, the red value is going to be a little bit higher. If there's a blue shift, the blue value is going to be a little bit higher. If there's green shift, the green value is going to be a little bit higher. So that's basically what white is. It's just a perfect representation of red, green, and blue having the same levels. Okay, let me just show you a quick tip for being able to accurately determine your RGB values on your scopes and in your shot. So we've got our scene here and we've got our, we've got our whites and we've got our scopes in the bottom here. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go down and hit these three dots and then see it says display qualifier focus. Click that. Now, once we've turned that on, we'll want to go down here to our qualifier and select our qualifier. So there we go. We now, you can see these three circles appearing on the, on the RGB values, on the scopes. So this is showing us when we hover over things where the RGB value is. So for example, if I go to this water, I can see that there's less red, there's more blue and green. And then if I come to the whites, you know, the RGB values are gonna line up a bit closer, but that's good, but I wanna see exactly those RGB values. So what I'll do is I'll just right click and then I'll go to show picker RGB value. Now, when I hover over, I get the exact number of the RGB on that pixel that I'm hovering over. So if I just go around here on the on the whites, you can see that I've got a red of 204, I've got a green of 202, and I've got a blue of 203. So on our camera, we've got, we've got different white balance presets. We've got AWB, which is auto white balance, 
we've got sun, shade, cloud, and incandescent. Now, these are good tools because instead of you trying to work out the color temperature of the environment, you can set your camera to the sun preset on your white balance if it's a sunny day. Basically telling your camera that it's a sunny day, that's what I want my white balance to be. And it'll get pretty close at reading the temperature of the ambient light. Then if it's shade, if you're in a bit of a shady area, then you would just switch it over to shade and it'll correct the white balance again. Now, if you're using auto white balance on your camera, what the camera is gonna do is it's gonna keep reading the environment and keep adjusting based on where the camera's looking. Now, the problem with auto white balance is we could have this scene here by the pool and it could read it at one white balance and then maybe you move the camera a little bit and it might read it a little bit different. So then you've got two shots at the same place where the white balances are slightly different. So it's going to cause you a bit of a headache when you come to color grade because you're going to have to rematch up those shots, which in reality, you don't really want to do that. You just want to have maybe have your white balance on the sun setting. So no matter where it's looking in this particular scene, it's got a fixed white balance on the sun preset and the shots are going to be more consistent. If you know that you're working in a sunny day, there's no clouds in the sky and there's no we're not going to be in shade, you can just easily put your camera to the sun setting and it's going to be pretty good. It's going to be pretty close to a correct white balance. Plus you're going to get consistency across all your footage for that day. Let's take this shot. We have got a scene here where I've got the wrong white balance. I've set it to the shade preset. So now the shot is too warm. In that case, I can just hover over the whites and I can see, okay, the, the red channel is 216, the green channel is 207, and the blue channel is 190. So I need to I need to balance that back up, okay? So what the way I can do that is if I go to my temp here, and I know it's quite warm, there's too much red, so I can start bringing blue back into the shot, and then we can hover over again. Now we've got 201, 206, and 208. So now the blue is dominant. So what I'll do then, I'll just dial that back a little bit, have a look again. So now we've got 207, 210, and 210. So we're getting pretty close. Let's dial the down a little bit more blue. So where are we at? 202, 206. So let's add a little bit more. Okay, so we're getting pretty close. Let's do that. 205, 207, 206. Let's just put a little bit of that in it. There we go. So... So what I've done there is I've I've adjusted the temperature and the slight tint of the scene so we can see the before and the after. Before and after. This is an incorrect white balance. The shot is too warm. So what we've done is we've fixed that with a temperature and a tint adjustment. And now we've got a better white balance shot. And the way we can tell that is by hovering over a white area and we can see that our red, green, and our blue channels are lining up better. We've got 205, 206, and 205. Now that we've lined up the RGB values on the white areas, we know that those whites are white, and that'll mean that all the other colors in the scene, including skin tones, the blue of the ocean, everything else will look natural and look correct. So I'm going to show you a second way on how to white balance. And this is how I like to white balance when I'm actually color grading because <clears throat> it's it's actually closer to a, a white balance adjustment as if we were doing it in camera. So if I take my node here and then I right click and I go to gamma and then I go up to linear, I'm changing this node to behave as if it's in a linear space. Now what I can do is if I take my image and I can see, okay, RGB, too red, not enough blue. I need to pull the reds down. I'll go to my gain here. And what I can do is I can start pulling down the red. Okay, and let's have a look. Okay, so where we're at now. Okay, so there's still too much green in the shot. So I'll pull down my greens. Let's have a look. And now I need more blue. So I'll add in some blues. Now, what have we got? 208, 207, 204, so a little bit more blue. There we go. So that's looking better now. So I've got 208, 206, 206. Let's just pull out a little bit of red. And 
boom, there we go. 205, 206, and 205. For me, that is just a much easier way to adjust white balance. Because we're controlling our RGB values here on the gain in a linear color space, we can easily pull down the reds, pull up the reds, pull down the greens, push up the blues to quickly and accurately get our whites to look the most natural. So now if I go before and after, we've got a beautifully white balanced image. Let's take this extreme example here. So it's really blue. So I think this one was 3000 Kelvin. Yeah, 3000 Kelvin. So it's completely, It's the image is pretty much unusable. Like it looks like we're underwater. So let's just grab this and let me just change it again. Gamma, go to linear and let me go to my color wheels. So it's too blue. So I need to pull back the blue. So let me pull that down and then I need to push some red into it. So let's see how that looks. And let me just go over with the dropper. So 201, 204, and 197. So now I just need to pull down the green a little bit. Pull down the green and push up the blues. Back up the blues and push up the greens a little bit. Go. So there we go. That's, that's it back. So 201, 200, and 201. So we've balanced that shot. So let's look at these two shots. So this is the problem why you need to get your white balance right in camera because if I look at this one here this was the shot that was too warm so this was when we shot in it was in the shade setting so we've got our whites correct here you know we've got our whites balanced and now we can look around the scene and we can see what's going on so whites are white now let's go to the next one where it was too cold so now you can see what's going on like we've got our whites balanced you know 203 204 you know, so they're all pretty good in terms of the white. So even though we've we've corrected the the white balance on this overly blue shot, it's left a blue hue across the, the other areas of the of the image. So even though our whites are technically balanced, we still have this cast across the image in other areas. So even though we can fix our white balance in post, you'll want to make sure when you're filming. <clears throat> you get your white balance as close as possible to prevent a strange color cast across the across the image thanks for thanks for watching and hopefully you got some use out of that some tips some insight and i encourage you just to keep practicing keep shooting and white balance this is one of those things where it'll just the penny will just drop you'll just get it one day like you'll be editing or you'll be shooting and you'll look at something and it'll all just click into place i promise you just just keep going it happened for me and it was like the best feeling because i eventually just got it and it just meant that i could really build upon my my skill set so don't forget to hit that subscribe button and i will see you in the next video